Good evening. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen? If you're watching this with me, it is another day that God has given you life. So we praise Jesus for that. Tonight, I want to read from the book of Hebrews. In verse 1, chapter 12, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. So we have an encouragement and a command here. Throw off everything that hinders and entangles and run with perseverance the race marked out for us. God has a race marked out for you and for me, and we need to run it, not allowing anything to hinder us. There's plenty of things in any given moment that may threaten to hinder us or to entangle us. And right now, I think that fear and worry are very prevalent in our society and just in the church in general. Fear of catching the virus, worry over what will happen to our country, concern for our friends and our family, anxiety over whether we're going to be able to afford the things that we need, maybe panic from the loss of a job. All of that is in the air right now. But we must not let these things hinder us from running the race that has been marked out for us. So before we move on to verse 2 of chapter 12, I want us to look back. The beginning of verse 1 says, therefore. As always, we need to see what the therefore is there for. What does it reference? I believe it references most of what's already been written in Hebrews, but more specifically, chapter 11, often referred to as the Hall of Faith. This is the great cloud of witnesses that it refers to in verse 1. Um, so they confronted fear with faith in this chapter. Now, I don't have time to read the whole thing, but I encourage you to do so. Verse 1 of Hebrews 11 says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And then it goes on to detail many examples of faith. Noah built an ark. People thought he was crazy. Abraham left his home in faith for things that he was promised but didn't see. It says all these people were living by faith. Um, it says that these people who were living by faith did not have their eyes and their hearts set on this worldly home, but that they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one, the place that God had prepared for them, for us who believe. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born, at great risk to themselves, because they chose not to fear the king's command. And by faith, Moses chose to be mistreated with God's people instead of taking the riches of Egypt. And there's many more stories in chapter 11 here, many of them great. There's uh, those, it says, who through faith conquered kingdoms and shut the mouths of lions and escaped the sword and became powerful in battle and routed armies. But there were also many who were tortured and faced jeers and flogging and were put in prison. Those who were sawed in two and put to death by the sword. Those who went about destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. They didn't have a place to live and they wandered in caves and mountains and deserts and holes in the ground. These were believers, people who trusted in God. The writer of Hebrews says that the world was not worthy of them. They ran their race, whether it led to great victory or certain death. Why? Because they were living by faith, not by fear, not by worry. They knew God had something better planned and that there was more than just this life. And their faith was not in themselves, but in the creator and ruler of the universe, in God. Their faith was not in themselves, but in the one who was to come, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And this is why in verse 2 of chapter 12, it says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
the long-awaited one, Jesus, came and he delivered us from death. We no longer need to fear death because he has conquered it. There is a heavenly city awaiting for those who believe. So my encouragement to you tonight is this. Run the race marked out for you by our Lord. Fix your eyes on Jesus, not on your situation. Put your faith in him, not in the things around you. Live by faith and not in fear. Read Hebrews 11 and 12 tonight. Let it be an encouragement to you. Pray with me. Jesus, I ask that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. You would help us to fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Thank you that you went to the cross for us, bearing our penalty for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free. I ask that you would help us to walk by faith, that we would not live in fear. Your perfect love drives out all fear. Give us the faith we need to run the race that you have marked out for us, whether it's full of happy and beautiful days or days with pain and with sorrow. And God, we thank you that you have prepared a better country for us, that a heavenly city awaits us. Give us strength. And perseverance in this day as we look forward to what is to come. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks for listening, church, friends, and Belize all over the country. I love you all. Have a blessed night.